Hey, it's Chris here with Allaire Homes in Chilliwack, and we're just at our latest uh, ICF build here. This home's built on a crawl space. It's a rancher, so about nine feet of ICF above grade. In this, in this case, the clients actually approached us because they had been um, sort of sold on ICF from a family friend. They brought me in to just sort of, you know, get some insight into ICF because we've done a number of builds over the years. So the, the, the attraction for them was they live in a very windy environment, and so ICF's not only got really good thermal performance, but it's also very quiet, very solid, uh, no creaking or wind noise. Um, and so the house just will have a very solid feel no matter what the weather's doing outside. One of the common questions with ICF is, is what do you do with ICF at grade? And so one of the things we do is we use a plastic product called Tough-X. It's a high density um, HDPE. It comes in a variety of colors and uh, we use it in a charcoal gray just because it's sort of the, the most traditional color for a foundation. Um, while I'm here as well, another detail over here is obviously with being a concrete structure, you want to think about penetrations. And so while it is definitely possible to drill through this and it's not even that difficult, um, a little bit of pre-planning for things like your gas lines, hose bibs, etc. Um, putting some sleeves in before the pour just makes that really easy. Yeah, we're going to go inside. I'll show you some of the sort of rough in details that we use on the inside. There's always lots of questions around, uh, you know, how do you finish the inside? What do you what do you need to do to accommodate the rough in trades, finish trades, those kind of things. So let's go take a look. So by and large with ICF, you've got, you know, in this case, a little over two and a half inches of foam. And so all of our rough ins can just get buried right into the foam. And so use a combination of tools to, to do this. Um, different ways you can do it. You can hot knife out your boxes. Um, you can use a, a chainsaw or something similar to cut your grooves in. And essentially you just embed your wires in there. You'll notice the plywood on the walls. So one thing we've, we've learned is that working with ICF, we try to make it as familiar to our trades as possible. So our, when our cabinet company comes through and they want to screw their cabinets to the wall, um, instead of having to look for the ties, even though there's plenty of fastening points in here, if we give them solid plywood, they can put a screw anywhere they want and we're not having to um, constantly show them where the ties are or teach them new tricks or things like this. It's, it's very familiar to them. So we're using, in this case, we used a, an ICF buck and there's different ways to do this, but one of the sort of critical things we want to do is maintain air tightness. And so we put these wood liners inside to be able to fasten our windows to them. They are fully bedded in acoustical sealant so that the air, air tightness is maintained from the concrete through the buck to the wood buck and then this will get rod and caulked to the window later so we maintain continuity. Um, on the bottom here this this particular bottom piece is actually a two by six with a partial slope that you saw on the outside. So occasionally there's a need to, to fur an ICF wall out um, for a variety of reasons. It might be structural, um, it might be to fit a, a shower valve in or certain finishes things like that um, and so in those cases we just frame a two by four wall right in front of it and that allows us to, to put in whatever we're looking to accomplish over there. So one of the questions we get all the time in planning is how much does this cost? So I've got two answers for that. Um, below grade, when you look at the total aggregate cost of doing conventional formwork, a frost wall, uh, finishing, framing, insulation, uh, ICF far is, is definitely cheaper. It's far better building science. It's a much more comfortable home. And so below grade, it's a no-brainer. ICF's the way to go. Above grade, it's definitely more expensive. And that gets a little more difficult to answer because it's so home specific. The simpler the home layout and style, the lower the increase in cost is going to be and the more complicated it is, the higher the increase. It's, it's like any type of construction. Um, there's no such thing as a square foot number that works for everything. Um, it comes down to details. And so on this particular home, which is reasonably simple and reasonably straightforward, it's approximately five to 7% more than conventional construction as far as an overall construction budget. Now, I, the question I always ask when a client comes to me about ICF is, what's your reason for this, right? If, if the reason is strictly energy performance, nothing else, then there's probably some other building technologies that, that come into play that are, that, are, that are viable alternatives. But when you look at the whole package, and I, I say this as someone who's lived in one before, from a indoor air quality comfort, from thermal performance, noise control, and just the, the thermal mass of the assembly, it creates an incredibly comfortable and efficient home to live in and nothing else I've lived in comes close to matching that. Um, and so, you know, if that's what, if you're looking at a holistic approach, then ICF's definitely a top contender. The temperature doesn't fluctuate much in an ICF house because of the thermal mass. The temperatures to change. I, I've lived in a house where the furnace failed in the middle of winter and it took three days for us to realize the furnace had failed. And vice versa in the summer, you can have 35 degrees and it might be a few days before your air conditioner needs to fire up. 
Whereas in a conventional wood frame approach, that's it's hours, not days. You know, I think when you look at the whole picture, um, at least personally, I, f I find ICF is is uh, is pretty tough to beat.